дискуссия на тему модели градостроительного развития современных агломераций сейчас начинается в зале А. Ladies and gentlemen, the session Models of Urban Development for Modern Agglomerations is now starting in Hall A. А на сцену приглашается модератор сессии Ума Адусамили. We invite to the stage the moderator of the session Ума Адусамили. Shall I in, now invite the speakers to the session? Gabriela Gomez Mont, Yasushi Ayoma from Japan, uh, Mr. Marat Kusnulin from Russia, from Moscow, and Ilyana Chugoskaya from the Ministry of Regional Development in Russian Federation. Oh, yeah, while they are arriving, uh, just to recapitulate the title of our uh, plenary session. Uh, welcome here. I think our fourth speaker is yet to arrive. Oh, she is the fourth speaker. Elena? Okay. Uh, the plenary session now is about models of urban development uh, for modern agglomerations. This is a, a subject which is very uh, uh, natural to follow after the first session moderated by Greg. And uh, just to uh, set the ball rolling, we have seen across the world, particularly the developing countries, the cities becoming suburban areas, cities seeing their suburbanization, cities seeing redensification, and then the phenomenon of new towns or satellite towns followed across the uh, periphery areas. And then now we are increasingly seeing a need for integration of all these uh, area developments into, uh, into something that may be called agglomeration here, may be called a region elsewhere, uh, or it may be called a metropolitan area in other contexts. Uh, the, the metrop in the agglomeration context, uh, those cities that have experienced uh, agglomeration planning and agglomeration development have been able to identify uh, their own characteristics as uh, uh, agglomeration politics, uh, political structure, agglomeration level planning, its own level of infrastructure development, agglomeration, agglomeration level economies, and uh, administration levels. So they are now moving towards agglomeration level governance structures. Uh, so I invite uh, the world cities sitting here uh, to explain their own perspective on how the agglomeration is working or uh, yet to begin in their own areas. Uh, to start with, uh, Mr. Yasushi Ayoma, who has the experience of uh, uh, being the vice governor of Tokyo Metropolitan Government in the past and is currently a professor at the Graduate School of Governance Studies, Meiji University, Japan. Sir, please. Uh, I am uh, currently a professor and uh, doctor of political science, but uh, previously, I worked for Tokyo Metropolitan Government for 36 years and uh, was uh, serving for the last four years as vice governor. So today I'd like to talk about uh, Tokyo. Um, uh, PowerPoint, uh, please. Okay. Uh, the history of uh, <coughs> Tokyo <coughs> as a city uh, started in 1457 uh, when Mr. Dokan Ota, one of uh, feudal uh, warlords, built the uh, Edo Castle. 
Uh, towns in Edo were expanded in a concentric fashion from the Edo castle, like uh, Moscow. It's uh, reported that around the year of uh, 1700, the area of the inner city in Edo was about 70 square kilometers, and its population was roughly calculated at 1 million. Uh, by the Meiji Restoration in 1868, Edo was renamed to Tokyo. Uh, generally, uh, cities uh, uh, are hubs for exchange and interaction. Edo was the same too. Uh, the Great Kanto uh, earthquake struck in 1923, and the majority of main urban zones in the central area uh, and the uh, eastern part of the city of Tokyo were destroyed by fire. Uh, economic growth after the Industrial Revolution and the earthquake uh, reconstruction expanded the urban zones in Tokyo to the suburbs. Following the decision to build the uh, five ring roads, the city of Tokyo sealed a plan to build additional three ring roads, a total of eight ring re roads uh, under the city planning project in 1927. Uh, furthermore, the area of the city of Tokyo was extended uh, and the population of the city was approximately calculated at 2 million in 1906, but it was increased to around uh, 6.8 million in 1940. Urban zones in Tokyo was burned uh, to the ground by the Great Tokyo Air Race in 1945. After the end of the World War II, the Metropolis of Tokyo decided the war damage reconstruction plan entering on road constructions in 1947. After the Metropolis of Tokyo was awarded to host the 1964 Summer Olympics. Uh, it developed Metropolitan Expressways, uh, which ran through from the downtown Tokyo to urban areas. Uh, to, uh, in Tokyo, via overpasses as well as underpasses. Uh, ring road and expressways together became the transportation infrastructure to support the economic growth of Japan uh, thereafter. After uh, the Tokyo Olympics, uh, it was planned that a nationwide highway network system was developed in Japan. To further upgrading the Metropolitan Expressways, the develop and development of the Metropolitan Chuo Kanjo Expressway was launched, and part of it was open to traffic in 1977. The city had, in fact, been spreading outward since the Edo period, and now uh, this pro had reached a saturation point, a single center could not longer support the rest of the city. The conclusion was that it was necessary to decentralize Tokyo's urban functions. The result was a proposal in 1982 to correct the centralized uh, single nucleus urban structure through multi-center urban design under this plan. 
subcenters were defined as describes with high potential for future urban development, being transportation nodes and areas where large scale uh, development of an um, utilized land or redevelopment is expected. At that time, the plan was formulated. A rising chorus of criticism was issuing from Japan, uh, provi uh, provincial, uh, provincial uh, cities regarding excessive concentration of urban functions within Tokyo. At least uh, superficial, physically, uh, multi-center urban design appeared to hold out uh, the promise of decentralization. In fact, it was simultaneously a means of expanding Tokyo's central district and as a way of avoiding excessive concentration in the city center. In the case of Tokyo, this is uh, the area uh, circumscribed by the National Capital Region Central Loop Road, a beltway roughly 100 kilometers in diameter. Uh, the National Capital Region uh, Central Loop Road runs past, connects the surrounding cities. All of these areas play an important role in the capital region. According to the result of the person trip survey conducted jointly by local governments in the capital area between 1988 and 1998, the predominant flow of people in the area shifted from a simple back and forth movement between the city center and the periphery to a complex inter-community movement. As seen in this uh, figure, uh, where line thickness, thickness uh, indicates the percentage increase in person trips along a given course. Human movement trends in the area have become increasingly complex and varied, a trend in all likelihood uh, reflecting the shift from an uh, industrial society to an uh, information society. In addition to the above, under the so-called uh, direct interconnecting operation, train passengers were able to go to the central districts from the outer circum uh, uh, financial areas in Tokyo without making a transfer to another train. Today, the Tokyo metropolitan area uh, forms world's uh, largest metropolitan area with a GDP and a population of uh, approximately 35 million people at a level that issues between the city center and the suburbs uh, uh, it is uh, important uh, Mm, center core area and suburbs. Uh, it's uh, heart of Tokyo and uh, uh, now uh, and uh, ancient uh, period, uh, the center core area of Tokyo, especially um, uh, Imperial Palace was center. And now uh, this is uh, center core and uh, uh, 100 uh, kilometer in diameter, uh, Tokyo is uh, uh, one function city. It's very important. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. I 
apologize for not uh, mentioning the names of our panelists earlier. Uh, our panelists here are uh, Mr. Alexander Puzano, from, uh, who is the General Director of Institute of Urban Economics from Moscow, and uh, Mr. Erkham Agbulato. Please excuse me if I am mispronouncing any of the names. The mayor of uh, Krasnoyak, which is, which is uh, I believe, the other extreme of uh, Moscow. Uh, it's located in Siberian area and with uh, far more difficult challenges uh, in the natural environment, probably. And we have Morris Leroy, Mr. Morris Leroy, from, uh, who has been in charge of the Grand Paris uh, plan. And uh, Mr. Alexander Epstein, an independent expert from Russian Urban Planners Association. Uh, these are our panelists. Uh, I now request the second speaker, uh, Mr. Marat Kusnulin, to please speak. Dear ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, we are opening our work of the third uh, urban forum, and it's uh, important to know that the first session is addressing the issue of the model of the um, urban construction. And for Moscow, it has uh, special significance because uh, Moscow today, first of all, is the capital of uh, Russia, and second, is the center of political, administrative, and financial and economic. Uh, educational, cultural, scientific uh, hub of, Mos of Russia and uh, its territory. Over 25% of the national um, gross uh, national product is formed. So as a center, Moscow is a central attraction. It attracts, it influences the development of the whole country. If you look through the GDP, if, uh, if uh, Moscow GDP increases by 1%, uh, then the uh, the uh, 0.22 percent uh, is the increase of the overall GDP of the of the of the country. The national product increases. Uh, likewise, I have to note as well that uh, in Moscow we have the highest uh, living standards and the highest uh, income and the. Uh, the greatest uh, concentration of capital is in the city of Moscow, and the greatest level of social development, too. Uh, Moscow enjoys uh, the highest level of uh, development, uh, and uh, over 70 percent of the budget is spent for social programs today, for additional uh, services and catering and uh, communal services, utilities, <coughs> education, and other social payments. Therefore, we uh, can speak about high living standards, which attracts population from throughout the country. It attracts people from, uh, and it directly uh, influences the development of uh, Moscow region and the uh, whole of um, central territory. And when we saw the problem with the traffic jams and the development of the city in the year 2009, the city was engulfed by the crisis when uh, the volume investment into real estate uh, dropped and uh, our construction works uh, also diminished and we were, were looking for the way out of the situation. We began to analyze our general plan of development and based on the previous general plan of development, in addition to 460 million square meters of real estate, uh, even more millions had to be built, and the enormous volume of uh, transport infrastructure had to be built. But uh, to, be, to be objective, we have to acknowledge that the uh, office uh, trade centers, uh, the construction, which you can see on this um, slide, the uh, construction rate was very, very quick, and the transportation system was not. Uh, developing as quickly as that, and it was lagging behind. And uh, we can observe enormous traffic jams today. Over 70% of the population today has to move using uh, public transportation, but even that is uh, overloaded. If you look at the slide on the right, you can see in the middle there is uh, the uh, uh, circle, the uh, uh, the, the blue circle, uh, it's overloaded, you can see, and all the uh, main lines uh, that lead to the central uh, central region are overloaded. Some people say that uh, all the roads lead to Rome, but uh, in Russia all the roads lead to Moscow. Uh, the railroads and the um, aut automobile roads, all, all of them lead to Moscow, so uh, it's a, a great uh, transportation hub as well, and uh, we have to solve the issues uh, pertaining to its development. 
we have to say that the plans of development of Moscow and Moscow region were not balanced uh, adequately and uh, they were formally coordinated by fact, but uh, essentially they did not uh, match each other and uh, Moscow was, uh, uh, housing was uh, built very quickly because it's quick business. You build it and you sell it and you make the fast pack, but you know, the peculiarities of uh, uh, Moscow construction. It uh, also pushed uh, the demand to the periphery, and in quest of uh, rapid uh, uh, revenues, uh, the transport situation also worsened in, in the region and uh, in, around Moscow and in Moscow per se. And when we began to analyze the situation, we came to the understanding that the existing general plan had to be modified because it had various errors which uh, were predicated on the um, growth of economic state of Moscow and the Moscow is much better off than we planned and the level of income is very high and people began to buy a lot of cars, motor vehicles and the population, the increase of population was about 0.1 percent to the existing number. The number of vehicles were increasing by 3 and 5 percent, 3.5 percent, whereas the uh, the, the 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 roads we only managed to build about 20 kilometers per year of roads per year so all this all the all these factors uh, predicated a number of uh, uh, required uh, several decisions to be taken and uh, i also would like to speak about the uh, level of construction works that just planned in the previous general plan development in moscow it uh, it uh, provoked uh, a sharp protest from the population, and uh, people were very much against this uh, mass construction, and Moscow had to face a dilemma. First of all, it's the opinion of its residents. The second is the volume of investments, because investments today in the real estate, investments in the construction works, they um, uh, really generate a lot of uh, revenues, and we had to find a decision that is how a city had to be developed uh, in a balanced way and uh, preserve the existing uh, rate of growth that had been accumulated in the past years. So a decision was passed to, to, to come over to the polycentric development of the city that is not only to develop Moscow within this, uh, its original boundaries, uh, but also to develop the uh, peripheries of Moscow and to, 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 to join additional territories. We worked with the Moscow region and uh, mostly uh, on Bale territory by the decision of the uh, 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 Russia was administratively connected to Moscow. The, the result of this uh, addition to Moscow, this increment, uh, one and a half years ago, this decision was passed. And I can tell you that based on the results of uh, 2013, uh, of, of around a million, about two million square meters of uh, real estate will be built in this uh, newly added territory. and. Uh, and most of them would be uh, creating jobs. And within this year, 30,000 uh, new jobs were created in the new territories. And the volume of investments that come into Moscow is now channeled into the new territories. Otherwise, with this organizational uh, decision, we obtained a very effective result. And uh, the next uh, possibility for the development of Moscow are inside the city. They are hidden inside the city, but they have a lot of limitations. I will speak about it later. We um, carried out or conducted the international contest, and uh, many foreign experts were taking part in this contest, and many approaches were confirmed by the participants in this uh, contest. The French companies uh, won the first two positions. I have to note we have very close cooperation with um, Greater Paris, and we closely cooperate with our colleagues uh, from uh, Beijing and uh, from Singapore. Otherwise, we're looking at how they are developing and uh, their rate development. And uh, the opinion of the experts also corroborate the fact that we need to set up new centers of attraction. And uh, we set before ourselves a very ambitious task in the new territories to create uh, a million new jobs within 20 years and to create a city that would accommodate one half million people. Otherwise, to move the business activity closer to the periphery of Moscow, this is one of our strategies for our development. And the second part of our strategy is to addition to the new territories. We also um, added the several local territories. In this map, you can see 12 principal points of development of the new territories. It will be university cluster, a medical cluster, and a business cluster, logistical cluster, agricultural, transportation, and also we have a territory that uh, contains two airports, 
which are nearby. We are developing this territory, and the principal point of growth for us is the territory which is closely linked to the city, the territory of Skolkovo, which is the innovation center that uh, will uh, create about uh, 30,000 jobs and uh, 3 million square meters of real estate in the river Ar Arkhangelske when instead of 5 million of housing, we are planning to build offices and business centers where people will live and work and play. And um, the uh, Moljaninovo Center, which is closest to the airport, Shermetyevo Airport, is another important project in the territory. I also would like to say that, based on the results of this uh, stance, the um, the resolution that was passed, it enabled us to, in the past three years, to to sustainably uh, increase uh, investments in, into the uh, main body of the capital. Uh, three. Uh, 172 billion dollars investment and over three rubles and three trillion are invested in in, in at this time. So we are tying our investment plan with our neighbors on the federal level. We passed a resolution that a legislation will be passed and the federal law will be developed, which is developed by the Ministry of Regional Development that will regulate the relations between two constituencies, Moscow uh, City and uh, uh, Moscow Region, and the development of the entire federal region, which we believe is uh, a great achievement. Uh, in, uh, we uh, do a big job with the Ministry of Transportation, uh, where we actually had, have coordinated our plans with, with respect to the simultaneous construction of rail, rail, railroads and uh, motorways and uh, uh, metropolitan, which is important because uh, the matter of subways, uh, because all of the plans were sort of uh, connected uh, into one single transportation program. So this uh, polycentric development, steps taken toward the polycentric development of the city, we have enormous reserves uh, for the internal development of the city, which is industrial zones. We have about 18,000 square hectares of industrial zones inside of Moscow. And um, some of the territories are not delineated, and uh, and there is an enormous number of uh, owners that have not been developing any production in the past years, hoping that this territory will be rebuilt with housing or some other real estate. They have legal uh, issues uh, pertaining to them and the risks of development of those industrial areas. But we are actively taking up this challenge, and in the year 2013 alone, uh, a gr an urban construction uh, decision with regard to the industrial uh, uh, industrial um, zone development uh, aiming to 12 uh, million square meters. Uh, this is our plan. This is our great reserve, enormous reserve. And uh, we uh, seek to redistribute the, the flows uh, of the real city inside Moscow. We have enormous reserves in terms of renovation of uh, uh, shabby buildings, and uh, in, in the course of our first session, Rigoren was making the first presentation. Uh, he analyzed uh, uh, the situation in Moscow. We really have uh, a positive uh, legacy. Uh, the 11 quarters that were planted in the Soviet days, uh, where the density is very low, and we have a great number of roads and, uh, and uh, quite a lot of pedestrian accessibility is also uh, there. So it's, 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 it's a positive asset. But in the meantime, those houses were built 50 years ago, and today we have to take a decision either to repair them, to subject them to overhaul, or to, to remove them. So we are working out a pro program for the uh, removal of the existing houses and uh, and the renovation of the existing houses as well. And this program will continue. And I also believe that renovation alone of the um, existing uh, housing uh, units uh, will bring about 50 million uh, high quality square meters of uh, uh, housing real estate. Uh, considering that we have such a colossal construction rates, about uh, eight and a half million square meters we, we, we commission each year, or three million is housing. And today, housing per capita amounts to about 19 meters in Moscow, in the city of Moscow, together with the Moscow region, it's about 23 square meters per, per person. We are lagging behind some of the megalopolises throughout the world, but uh, we have other serious urban decisions that will influence the development of the city, which is the uh, uh, Moscow River Basin.
It is only 30 percent developed, and the extension of the Moskva River in Moscow is 180 kilometers. Uh, river banks amount to that, and we are preparing the international contest, which will be carried out next year, and it will be uh, posited as a separate plan for the city development. And uh, what is most important for the city development is the transportation scheme. And our colleague from Japan was speaking in detail about that. And uh, we actually look very much at what Tokyo has achieved in this area. And uh, this is a good example for us to follow. And we are trying to uh, accelerate, expedite the development of this transportation uh, transportation scheme, uh, 333 kilometers of uh, of um, subway, and we want to build 160 more kilometers of uh, subway. We are real realistically building them, and half of this volume, and uh, 40,000 workers are working around the clock building subways in Moscow, and uh, we are tying the uh, uh, transportation uh, system of railways and uh, uh, a great number of railways, it's, it's, it's a plus and a minus. It's a plus because we have uh, uh, ready-made transportation network. The, the minus is that it cuts the city into several parts, and um, uh, which has a lot of uh, crossings and uh, additional automotive roads. And uh, with the view of transportation, I want to emphasize the, uh, the uh, motorways. Uh, and they have to be connected, and uh, they have to cross the railroads, and all these crossings are not easy, and we have to cooperate with, our, with the railroad um, owners so that we really can uh, coordinate all that. And uh, on the territory of Moscow alone, we have about 100 kilometers of railways, and uh, we believe that 80 kilometers already are being, const uh, being built, and they will be commissioned by the end of uh, 20. 15 and uh, also another issue of uh, transportation uh, hubs uh, we have uh, some of the stations uh, uh, where transshipment amounts to about uh, as one and a half million people and we want to further develop them and we have a special program for the uh, transportation uh, transfers and the uh, parking lots and uh, uh, having listened to the previous session as our mayor had to say we indeed are looking at the problems of our colleagues and we can observe the problem of the megalopolis are very much alike and uh, we also hope that this work of our forum will also help us find uh, practical ways to solve such problems in Moscow's radio cooperation. I thank you all for your attention to my presentation. Thank you. I now invite our third speaker, uh, uh, Gabriela Gomez Mont from Mexico. She's the director of uh, City Lab of Mexico. Hello. So I am going to start the story of a very big city from a very tiny territory in the city, which is a, a new laboratory that is run by myself with a team of 15 people working for the mayor of Mexico City. It's called Laboratorio para la Ciudad. And um, so my profile is very different from my colleagues on the panel. And I want to open up the question if maybe when planning these huge infrastructural changes, we also have to think about the social imaginaries that are hidden in the tiny territories that we call a megalopolis. So this is um, our rooftop. We work upon a government building in Mexico City, uh, overlooking the expanse of the city center. Mm -hmm. Oop. This is the, our, our workplace, and this is my team. It, my team is made out of uh, 15 people that come from very unusual backgrounds for government. There's designers, artists, urban psychologists, sociologists, um, and all sorts of these uh, filmmakers, etc. And uh, for the last five months, we've been working in the space that we're also looking to make into a tiny vortex to start thinking about all things city from a multidisciplinary perspective, both locally and internationally with all sorts of accomplices that we will be partnering with in the, in the next months. 
And one of the central questions at, at the core of our work is thinking about the city as a cultural invention and citizenship as a creative act. So we have two axes. One of them is uh, civic innovation, which means how can we start reinventing small territories where government and civil society can come together to think about city. Another of our axes is urban creativity, which means how can we offer up the space of the city as the space of creative, uh, as the space of creativity, as a space of thought in many ways. And so what we are, are an experimental area, and we get to pilot projects for the Mexico City government. We are also out to make uh, government walls a lot more porous and have other people that have not necessarily thought of government as a space to work as one of the places where they can implement their ideas and offer up a safe space as well for the rest of government to try to pilot new ideas and then when proven successful we can implant them and implement them in, on a larger scale. So one of our first projects is called Code for Mexico City. We partnered with a very successful uh, US program called Code for America. And what we did was pull out, put out a call to find six programmers, young programmers with a lot of talent, and have them work in six different ministries across the city. So what we're trying to do is start all sorts of unusual combinations where we can have, for example, the expertise of the, minist the Ministry of Transportation married with new ways of thinking and new technologies that the younger generations have. So we're working right now with the Ministry of Transportation, or, uh, Economic Development, Health, Environment, and uh, Tourism. And this program has been going on for two months with already very successful uh, scenarios. We're also looking to start finding this social temperature of the city and see what is happening around them, what the questions are, what the, basically what the needs are and the desires are and, and the impulses of, a, of the city as well as start finding different ways of creating platforms where we can find ideas that come from civil society and from experts, again, that have not necessarily seen government as a space to, to, to work with. And, um, and this is our territory. This is Mexico City. It, it is the largest and oldest city on the American continent. 50% uh, of our population is under age 26. 50% of our of our economy is, comes from the informal economy. And so we have this tiny little lab to think about a very huge territory, which is one of the biggest megalopolises in the world. It's also the eighth largest economy. And strange as it might seem, this city was once this size. This is um, the first map taken after the Spanish conquest circa the 15, early 1500s. And at that time, when we thought of a polycentric city, this is what it looked like. That is what it looks like now when we have to think about what polycentric cities mean. Um, this is another view of, of the city back then. As you can see, Mexico City was, placed, uh, was built upon a lake. It's also very interesting geography to create a huge megalopolis. It's, uh, surrounded, it's in a valley surrounded by more than 40 active volcanoes. And uh, it's also earthquake territory, so it's very intense and not necessarily for the faint-hearted. Um, mm -hmm. This is a map of Mexico City in the early 1900s, uh, when we had about half a million people as a population. So as you can see, it, there was a huge growth to be had um, in a very short time, it seems, as the same as Tokyo. And this is Mexico City today, seen from space. This is the, actually the metropolitan region, which is 22 million people strong. And so we can no longer, as you see, think only of the city edges and the city borders. We have to start thinking about metropolitan space. More or less 5 million people come into Mexico City every day from the surrounding areas. And uh, these are some of the four axes that our Ministry of Urban Development and Housing is thinking of. And one of them is definitely the polycentric city, as well as a dynamic city, a compact city, and the extrovert city. This is the, the valley where the metropolitan area is housed. And it's, as I mentioned, surrounded by mountains. And basically, what has happened with the space of Mexico City is that it is now one big expanse, as you can see, and the metropolitan area is composed of Mexico City as well as the neighboring state of Estado de Mexico and Hidalgo, so different municipalities. That is what it looks like today.
Uh, funnily enough, when you talk about uh, Mexico City, it has very much a, uh, has had a radio development, but funnily enough, at the beginning of times of, of the city, which is actually composed of many towns that the city ended up eating, it was polycentric by its very own nature. This, for example, is the Zócalo of Coyoacán. So we had a central plaza in many of these towns, as well as mar their own marketplace, their own cathedral. This is Tlal uh, San Angel, which has, has, has exactly the same thing as, as Coyoacán. And this is Tlalpan. So many of these towns are now part of uh, very much the center, if, if you will, of, of Mexico City. Uh, and we are in diapers still thinking about a metropolitan area. So we have a metropolitan fund that has been in place since 2006, if I remember correctly. But funnily enough, for example, in 2013, only we did not use 60% of this metropolitan fund just because there was not enough coordination between the neighboring states and Mexico City. So all this space went to waste. And many of the, f the, the money that they get, get implemented for infrastructure was more for the specific parts of the city rather than for the whole of it. So we have um, definitely a lot of way to go with social programs, security issues um, that we have to start thinking about in a regional area. For example, Mexico City had more or less 40% of the budget goes to social programs. So we have people from neighboring states, for example, elderly or women that want to have an abortion coming in to the city itself. So that also creates a, a population that either moves in to the, city, to the city proper or actually commute every day. We have one of the worst commute times in, in the whole world, unfortunately. And since we're actually a basin, since, and we have not necessarily thought of ourselves as an ecosystem, if you will, as, a, as this conglomeration, we're also drying up the river system in the area, and this has not only effects for the places where the rivers are, are but also for the, for the city itself. And because of the way the urban development has gone rampant, the green areas and the forest that used to surround Mexico City, especially in Estado de Mexico, has been eaten up by urban development. Uh, another interesting fact is that waste management and the dumps in Mexico City lie in other states. So we're paying other states to throw our garbage in their, in their own backyard with huge costs as well as problem, uh, worsening the, the problem of transport. So these are all the challenges that we have to look forward to, to so we can truly start thinking of ourselves as that one urban sprawl that we actually are for all intents and purposes. Uh, so that is, this is the state of Mexico which neighbors Mexico City and some numbers on this if the clicker works is it houses 13% of the population of Mexico. There's 420 people per square kilometer, which makes it one of the densest places in Mexico. It's 9.7% of the GDP, and industries account for the 28%. Mexico City is 20% um, of the GDP and almost 30% of the population, if you think about it, in the metropolitan area. And it's much more about financial services. So in many ways, there is, there is a natural tendency to, for, to complement the way that um, Estado de Mexico as well as Mexico and Hidalgo work. What are the, some of the things that are happening to start thinking about the metropolitan region? One of them is the creation of an uh, agency of urban management, will, which will be overlooking a metropolitan development. We also have Escudo Centro, which was implemented about six months ago, which deals with the security of the region, not only of uh, Estado de Mexico, Mexico City, but also Morelos, because even though Mexico City's crime rates have dropped, notwithstanding the drug war, we also know that it's very easy for whatever social and as well as um, as well as security problems that we have in the neighboring states to actually seep into the territory. And so we're just now starting to, to implement systems that where we can feed information into different states. For example, cars that were stolen are stolen in Mexico City usually end up in Morelos. But until about three weeks ago, we had no way of ch commonly tracking these cars that as they, as they cross the state border. Uh, we also have a few, obviously, um, a few transportation issues that we need to resolve, but there's now, since 2008, been an intensified program to deal with uh, 
suburban trains, but we're still a long way from actually thinking of transportation on a regional level. Some of the other projects to be implemented to start thinking about this polycentric city that I mentioned is one of them is the SODES program, which are zones of economical development. So they will be creating five different specialized zones across the city. The first one to be implemented that was just announced two weeks ago is a zone for health, where since ser health services are very imp uh, in an important economical motor for Mexico City, so now there's going to be there, we're going to try to find vocations of the city, and these economical development plans have to do with underutilized space in Mexico City of many of them actually post-industrial spaces. We're also starting to think about the reactivation of barrios that we call, which are neighborhoods, um, of basically starting to reactivate the social circuits around what used to be these, these uh, very socially intense neighborhoods. And we also have complete streets project coming into places that have been forgotten because they're marginal and uh, most RTP systems have been put through our main streets. And now we're suddenly going to start developing other zones of the city and connecting them a lot better to the central parts of the city. There's also a multimodal transport hub being created where we're starting to think about Densifying and rezoning uh, spaces around very powerful transport hubs, as well as having the bike share system, the RTP, the subway all connect to these different parts of the city so we can have move people a lot quicker. And then there's also another program from the Ministry of Economic Development to rezone post industrial uh, places of the city that have. Um, post-industrial places that have become underutilized because they've gone mostly to, to neighboring places. So from within the lab, what we want to do is start rethinking the social imaginaries that go along with, with these projects, um, because we believe in the objective topographies and how important they are to the city, but we also have the feeling that the subjective imaginaries many times become just as important. And in that sense, the symbolic infrastructure of a city becomes the space where we, where we, what, that we try to activate. Uh, one example would be the marketplaces, where we have just now started uh, getting the open data on different markets across the city. There, we have 252 of them. Some of them are very much used and still social nodes, but other of them have uh, started dying and their social importance has, has come down. So what we're trying to do is start to reactivate them through different means and mechanisms, piloting different types of projects in combination with many political, uh, political uh, uh, other ministries, if you will and to start seeing how we can reinvent and reimagine these social nodes, which is also part of what it means to be a polycentric city. So I had a few more things, but I, I think my time is up, so I'll, I'll just leave it there. Thank you. We have been hearing about city and uh, the agglomeration experiences so far from the perspective of the cities that are representing them. Now we have a speaker Oh, oh, do we have the speaker, Elena? Yeah. Uh, Ms. Elena Chugoskaya from the uh, Russian Federation and the Ministry of Regional Development. Probably we will get an opportunity to hear from her. What is the national perspective on the policy of agglomerations? This is a great opportunity for us. Esteemed participants of the forum, I welcome you on behalf of the Ministry of Regional Development of Russian Federation and will brief you about the directions uh, of work of uh, the ministry uh, to support uh, agglomerations. Russia is uh, the country of cities. We have more than 100 cities of Russian Federation. They are most different and integration of uh, all efforts, both uh, business and society, is very important for us, and uh, we assume a number of steps which are supported by legal grounds and also by our organizational effort. And a special approach is required for different regions. We have identity for every region the same as with human beings and the management system 
of the cities could be differentiated through also with the state support. And the Ministry of Regional Development is preparing a very important document, the grounds for the regional uh, policy, which is approved by the presidents for 2014. Uh, the whole program is directed to encourage the social and economic development. The special approach to that uh, problem, and we see it through a strategy of spatial development of Russian Federation, which is defined by the state uh, planning bill uh, in order uh, to uh, disperse the population more evenly, and we have certain framework uh, to uh, direct the population of the country to a certain region. It's the mission which we are trying to comprehend from the modern viewpoint. And uh, we are thinking that it's important to formulate the tools to support the uh, mega cities development and cities development and uh, the roadmap has been prepared and discussed uh, on many sites both in Moscow and beyond Moscow in Samara and in Sochi welcomed us at economic forum we continue this work in order to work out the tools for state support which could ensure normal development of our cities Uh, here, what is agglomeration? How we position this notion? It's a combination of municipal entities uh, in the limits of the territory where we have some settlements combined in a comprehensive and dynamic system with infrastructural, social, and economic ties. This uh, formulation is part of our roadmap and uh, legally agglomeration is not uh, available in the legal frame but it will appear for it uh, defines uh, the approach to a number of legal documents and we have to react to those tendencies uh, which we see in the world uh, how agglomerations are growing how population is getting settled all over the place and this is the slide demonstrating the uh, dynamics and what kind of problems emerge here and Moscow demonstrates uh, most effectively and is a site which is used on the one hand to demonstrate the solution of these problems and uh, which helps Russian F Federation to take into account this uh, experience and Moscow is uh, the leader and is a pilot project, uh, both in the processes of the development of uh, city agglomeration. While these problems are very well uh, known to, to you, and today we have approximately uh, 20 agglomerations with a population of more than 1 million people, we have two uh, mega megalopolis uh, and 20 agglomerations with million cities and in 20 uh, years only five cities uh, which are the cores of uh, agglomerations these are like Moscow, Rostov on the Don, Kazan and Krasnoyarsk and Ekaterin, uh, uh, Burk, Nabirizhny, Chelny and around these regions we also see some so-called threshold agglomerations which are uh, having more than 500,000 people and uh, uh, localization in future is defined in the uh, program of development which was done in 2012 by the Ministry of Economic Development and the development of each federal uh, district envisages the points of growth to develop the territories of the federal district. I'm not going to enumerate uh, the points of this slide. These are the cities and agglomerations which are 
mentioned in the strategy. What do we get by agglomeration, activization uh, of uh, several problems? It's not only transportation infrastructure and environmental framework, dissemination of population and uh, infrastructure. And for this, we need to rationally use the territory uh, to use properly land resources, source and search for new points of growth, uh, and also taking into account the documents of territorial planning. And Mr. Husnulin also said that there is a comprehensive uh, program for comprehensive planning of Moscow uh, suburbs uh, St. Petersburg, which would ensure, ensure the development of the city of the future, which will also expand beyond its uh, boundaries and will synchronize the efforts of uh, both entities, part which are, would be the part of that agglomeration. And it will find, found its uh, legal uh, grounds. And uh, in legal practice, we don't have the notion of agglomeration. And we need to introduce this term to develop agglomeration. And we analyze different systems of management. Primarily, this is uh, to manage the territory. Maybe this is the agreement about uh, cooperation on municipal level, or there might be a special agency to manage the whole territory, or some document of t territorial planning of uh, a legal subject when this region is a moderator of this territory. And such examples in Russian Federation are already in practice. And uh, agglomeration should be a comprehensive system uh, to be managed. And the following elements uh, should be done. The concept should be there. And a list of documents which are defined by the Ministry of Regional Development to select pilot uh, projects uh, to execute agglomerations and also to generate a comprehensive approach to different uh, scenarios of development and find the points which need to be adjusted to prepare bills and recommendations and prepare state support measures and state support programs. In the given case, uh, we see the uh, kind of documents to legally support the projects and three-level uh, planning documents and strategy is the basis for it. And uh, the notion of strategy of socioeconomic development is not only an economic document, but also a strategy of spatial development. And maybe that's the niche which need to be filled by such documents as master plan. Some cities try to prepare these documents. However, this document is not embedded into the legal field of uh, Russian Federation. And we have to talk about the system of uh, strategic documents and budget planning. We are planning to introduce a number of changes into the legal framework and the certain legal changes should be implemented in the development of territories in the budget code, which um, will allow to use uh, the budget funds of different levels to uh, ensure the issues relevant to the self-governance and regional management. So it's a whole set of different uh, bills and uh, uh, legislation uh, proposals which will make it possible to ensure integration of different uh, management levels and difficult systems uh, which are represented by city agglomerations. At the end, I would like to draw your attention to the fact that the world trends which uh, are taken account by the 
the Russian Federation and the um, efforts undertaken to develop uh, this far of the population in our country. Indeed, more than any other country needs special approaches to the development of agglomerations. And um, we speak about the development of certain agglomerations, not only uh, for support of such agglomerations, but the support of the whole diversity of the agglomeration systems, which are not only multinocular but dispersed systems that exist. Uh, spatial and the functional directions and the territorial conditions, that is, the whole diversity of their forms in the, their cities uh, in agglomeration systems have to be taken into account. And uh, we support the development of agglomerations uh, on the territory of Russia. We work in the roadmaps and we um, have an inter-agency working group and uh, based on the experience with pilot projects that uh, we will publish, the results of which we'll publish, we will speak about, uh, we will use such forums as this in order to plan correctly the development of agglomerations and to improve the living standards of such territories and develop um, the Russian Federation through such highly important territories which are the policies of growth for Russian economy. Thank you for your understanding. Uh, now we have a very short time available to us uh, for the panelists to uh, react to some of the things and also to give their own uh, views on the subject. But before we proceed with that, I would just briefly like to summarize what has been said till now. Uh, it appears that uh, the experience of uh, Moscow's agglomeration plan, similar to something that uh, was explained this morning regarding London, Greater London, I think there are uh, a major, major issues related to retaining the supremacy of the core city. Uh, it, it appears to be a major concern in these uh, parts of the world, and uh, that's probably because Moscow is experiencing the urban agglomeration plan for the first time, and as a <coughs> national policy, you seem to be far more uh, uh, alive to the issue of uh, uh, you know addressing the problem at all levels uh, there are many examples in the world where this core city supremacy maintenance versus uh, the demands of the peripheral cities to take over some of the functions and uh, also the core cities need to disperse some of the activities which are located in the core city now which are very land intensive and less value adding to the economy of the city and the national economy uh, which can be dispersed to the rest of the peripheral area and the peripheral areas can use them then as economic centers to grow their development around. Uh, this has been a model experimented in many uh, agglomerations around. Uh, I think this is one issue as to how core city versus peripheral cities will adjust their own supremacies and uh, activity uh, dispersal uh, politically. How do they settle this issue is one thing I would like the panelists to address. At the same time, Many agglomerations in the world have seen uh, through the evolution process that uh, the agglomeration concept came together in terms of need uh, felt for integration of infrastructure investments and to see a long-term uh, environmental management of the region uh, against a certain natural and uh, man-made disasters. Uh, but increasingly there is a need to look at land use and development control uh, to get some kind of uniformity around the development around the uh, core cities and also uh, wherever that has been achieved to a great extent there are uh, there is an increasing demand for uh, a kind of govern governance structure uh, where people want to be elected for the agglomeration level and not just for the city levels uh, to be able to decide uh, how investments are made at the agglomeration level how the resources are pooled and redistributed. This is something we have been experiencing in Mumbai metropolitan region where uh, people are no longer satisfied with uh, centrally driven uh, infrastructure provision. There, is, there are greater demands now to be governed at that level. We are still finding it very difficult to deal with this demand for governance. So this governance, uh, need for governance, need for land use control, and need for uh, settlement of the political issues between uh, core function dispersal is something I would like the panelists to respond to. Uh, we, uh, we can start with Mr. Alexander Puzano, uh, General Director of Institute of Urban Economics, Moscow. Thank you very much for the opportunity to take part in this uh, panel discussion. It seems to me that uh, it is very important that uh, in the uh, 
uh, presentations of our foreign colleagues, they presented the topic of uh, secondary centers, that is polycentrical developments um, in the uh, framework of a uh, agglomeration that is uh, even radial uh, ring system which has taken shape uh, in another city is not uh, an impediment for the formation of uh, uh, secondary centers. And, uh, and the second important conclusion that we can come to is that there are there is experience and uh, of uh, growing such uh, centers, secondary centers uh, of uh, second order uh, that exist on the territories uh, where the zone development of agglomerations comes, rather the uh, erasing, which uh, the erasing of their identity, which uh, has occurred in the periphery of Moscow, which is a topic of our principal urbanist uh, forum, or urban forum, and attempts at reconstructing them anew. And this lesson has to be learned and taken into consideration in the development of uh, Moscow agglomeration in its current state, because because the surge of so-called uh, multi-story um, high-rise uh, suburbanization outside of the uh, Moscow Ring Road and high-density construction, uh, low-comfort uh, housing, it will erase the potential that uh, the adjacent uh, cities possess and we will have on the uh, subsequent stage uh, think how to smoothen uh, this uh, uh, uniformity of the territories, monotonousness of these territories in the urbanistic forum. I believe it's very important uh, to understand that. It's important that we all realize that too. But uh, also there is a big risk involved and this topic has to be kept in mind. We also have to bear in mind Passing over to the topic, about, uh, speaking about Moscow per se, is that uh, the, new, the plan of New Moscow, development of Moscow is um, only a part of the uh, big plan. It has to be a plan of uh, development of Moscow agglomeration uh, and uh, we really have to be involved with the development of uh, Greater Moscow and the possibility to address such issues, the development of the city of Moscow by joining new territories, uh, from my perspective, should not obstruct and diminish uh, the importance uh, of uh, of um, consolidation of our efforts for the development of liberation of uh, Greater Moscow. I, I, I believe that number of uh, highly important uh, steps was made in that direction. The, transport, um, the Council of Transportation, which is headed by the Minister of Transportation and the law on the joint uh, territorial planning, which is uh, being developed in the Ministry of Regional Development uh, of uh, Russia. These steps are very important and timely. Uh, in the meantime, we uh, these are only uh, partial improvements, whereas we have to in the Russian Federation, we have to face many challenges, and the, uh, that is to, to choose the right uh, model for the control of the agglomeration that has to be uh, a systemic. We, we need a systemic solution. After all, the world experience goes to show that there are several models to, to use, and, uh, and the framework with it, within which such models are realized. Uh, otherwise, we can, we can say that there are two principal directions. Uh, on the part of the federal bodies, of executive power bodies, we can say that it's coercion to cooperation uh, for this agglomerational cooperation which happens in France and, uh, and uh, to stimulate uh, this kind of uh, uh, conglomeration, which is the United States and many other countries throughout the world. We have to choose the model um, based on the uh, specifics of our country, the peculiarities of our country. We can discuss the issues of uh, setting up specific uh, new level of budgetary system, our uh, inter-municipal system to delegate certain authority on the municipal level. We have to delegate them some authority. We have to also activate the dormant norms of uh, interaction and uh, the possibilities to create administrative uh, regions or wards uh, within the various uh, agglomerations. Otherwise, uh, we are at a point when, when um, very important decisions, vital decisions, need to be taken with regard to the, uh, our future development, model of our development, and agglomeration cannot be uh, only narrowed down to the technical or technocratic for this matter, issues or, or some partial improvements uh, which also are needed, but uh, I also would like to carry on this discussion 
And uh, at one of the slides uh, that we saw, it, the, pr the purpose of this liberation, what is the purpose of it? It's very important to introduce the human dimension into it, the overall uh, labor effect and the possibility, opportunities for, for man to live and to use the services that a city can provide, a big city can provide, but not a small city. Um, uh, statistically or administratively, which uh, which provides enormous opportunities for improving human capital, human potential, which is the principal field for competition in today's world. And uh, this, again, has to be taken into account when you choose the agglomeration model. You have to look at the taxation legislation, which uh, has been going on for many years, that is where to pay taxes for uh, private individuals uh, when we speak about coordination of economic issues. And, um, and also we have to, uh, to, to uh, completely understand uh, what we have already reflect on we have achieved with that is uh, looking into the behind our back we can say that in the 90s we had a joint collegium of uh, moscow region and moscow it, it was uh, uh, rescinded later on and uh, disbanded uh, dissolved but uh, do, do you think we need to set up the same body once again uh, it also has to be um, considered it needs to be uh, looked into very seriously at the time when we are making such a choice because uh, experience proves that without without the federal interference a uh, few things are happening in the transportation council it's a federal level solution and uh, united uh, or joint collegium was also uh, another entity which was very important and the law on territorial planning was developed by the federal executive power body and without horizontal mechanism cooperation and uh, and the coordination uh, we cannot have federal uh, centers federal center would not be enough and we have a lot of competencies that are needed which need to be developed the complexities of the agglomeration objects have to correspond with the complexity of the management and control and management systems. And simple solutions do not always work, do not always produce the effect we are looking for. Thank you. The Honorable Mayor of uh, uh, Krasnoyarsk, uh, Mr. Edham Agbulato. Uh, may I request everybody to be a little bit briefer because we have uh, overshot our time already. Thank you very much. I would like to thank the organizers uh, for the opportunity to speak at this highly representative forum. The agglomeration indeed is uh, an objective reality of uh, today and uh, Many speakers have said already today the principal share of the original gross uh, product is uh, product in the agglomerations. Having said that, uh, I would um, I would also have to say that uh, uh, economy is the foundation for the agglomeration. And uh, Mirac Kuzanovic, he was characterized in Moscow agglomeration. He said that uh, to a great extent, national gross national product is uh, produced in Moscow agglomeration, which really is a fact, and the development uh, index of economic development would uh, be very much a basis for the formation of uh, various agglomerations. I represent the city of Krasnoyarsk, and the uh, scope and scale of the city are much smaller than those of Moscow, about 10 times smaller. However, we also are, we have an agglomeration taking shape, and this, uh, this, the scale of this agglomeration is smaller, and um, it's about uh, a million two hundred thousand people, and uh, by the year uh, 2020, it will amount to one and a half million people. What is the basis uh, for the existence of this agglomeration? If we comment on the uh, thesis which I spoke about earlier, the economic foundation looks like uh, like this. Uh, if you look at it per capita, that is uh, GNP per capita in Krasnoyarsk, we, we rate number seven in the Russian Federation, but in contrast to Moscow, it is a twofold uh, smaller index compared to Moscow. If uh, Moscow is about 18 or 19,000 euros per capita per year, then in Krasnoyarsk, uh, in Krasnoyarsk agglomeration, it's uh, about eight to 9,000 euros per, 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 per annum. 
the prospects uh, for the uh, improvement of this index. We believe that there are realistic prospects for increasing this uh, index that would uh, ensure sustainable development of the agglomeration, which is industrial development of our agglomeration and uh, contemporary industrial development on the basis of new technologies. And the industrial development uh, will stand forth as uh, one of the principal keys to the close to the development of Krasnoyarsk agglomeration because it will uh, make it uh, possible to make the economy of the region more complex and uh, uh, will uh, create adequate conditions for the additional uh, gross national product uh, and hence at least to the budget and the creation of conditions for the formation of the agglomeration. We believe that it's quite realistic in the coordination of such projects uh, that have sustainable world uh, uh, prestigious uh, non-ferrous metals and uh, oil and gas complex and uh, and uh, forestry uh, we really can develop potential for the agglomeration uh, so that we can come to the uh, indexes uh, the same benchmarks as uh, 20 19 20 thousand euros per capita per single resident in the agglomeration this is our objective this is the economic basis as regards the normative uh, foundation, we believe that it's uh, the, the documents of the uh, urban city planning. We are working on the transport, uh, uh, complex transport system, all these documents without which it is impossible to manage or to control the agglomeration. We attach a lot of uh, importance to it. Also to the uh, to the future of industrial zones, which are under the conditions of such agglomerations I was referring to are certainly should not only be considered as a redevelopment for residential or housing, but uh, for also contemporary or modern industrial industrial usage. Um, about 80 kilometers in Moscow are occupied with industrial zones. Many of them have um, forfeited their importance, and um, many believe that the zones could be optimized, but about 60, 65 square kilometers will be occupied by industrial zones with uh, the production of which uh, uh, will amount to eight to uh, six million rubles per, per year uh, per square kilometer. On the, under under such conditions, uh, we can hope that the agglomeration will be successfully developing. Uh, it's from the urban point of view, but from the normative, it's not enough because the Krasnoyarsk agglomeration, for this matter, we have one half uh, million people, prospectively, with the area of about a million hectares is uh, seven municipal formations, uh, municipal wards, uh, which uh, several satellite cities and um, three municipal wards. And without normative regulation, which we <coughs> mentioned before, it is impossible to organize our work because we have to confront now and in the future the need to create uh, intermunicipal funds, uh, development funds that would be controlled by the single control body that would make it possible to solve, to address all the issues that we have in our agenda because we stick to the logic that agglomeration is not a merge by a big cities of adjacent territories, but it's partnership. Partnership of municipal uh, units, uh, municipal wards that uh, for form the medium for employment, uh, for, for life, for, for normal ecology. Uh, for 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 pastime and uh, for whatever which we which we consider to be comfortable living standards. Thank you. Uh, may I now invite uh, Mr. Maurice Leroy, uh, ex-minister of urban affairs and in charge of Grand Paris. Merci uh, de votre invitation. Uh, Et avant de commencer, je vous invite tous à aller voir. Thank you very much for the invitation. And uh, today's event is very interesting. I am attending it for the second time, uh, Moscow Urban Forum. And I'd like to thank organizers for the quality and thank you also for simultaneous uh, translators who are in charge of simultaneous translation and today we are talking about Tokyo, about Mexico, about uh, Moscow and Paris. These are megalopolises and uh, 
in 2050, there will be many more, and 65 population of our planet will be living there. And these uh, are the centers of power. So, Madam Chair, colleagues, we have to understand that we are talking about future. We are talking about more than half of the population of the planet. And such agglomerations, they have to become the places of solution of the problems of the world, but also the points uh, for the growth, for all talents, wealth, and decision makers are stationed here. And remember, Athens, they brought democracy to the world, uh, ancient Rome, the megalopolises of the past also made a huge investments, both military and administrative. And uh, also, we witnessed the revolutions about future development of uh, humanity, emerging of cap capitalism happened in huge cities, Venice, Amsterdam, London, and New York. Today we have Shanghai, tomorrow Jakarta, Mexico, Lagos, Singapore, and others, Sao Paulo, and of course, many states, they experience the burden of weight of lots of uh, debts, and some states, they do not have funds to develop megalopolises. And Madam Chair mentioned about that, that the main challenges of 21st century are demonstrated and revealed in megalopolises uh, to the most. And out of 9 billion uh, people uh, of human beings living, uh, on this planet will be living uh, in uh, big cities and uh, we are talking about huge uh, agglomerations with uh, 350 million of inhabitants and the majority of GDP will be also produced in such kind of cities and these cities of the f uh, future, they will create most of the added value. And at present, 60 major cities of the United States, more than 60 percent uh, of GDP is produced there. And there, about 80 percent of skilled workers are living there. At the same time, these cities, they face different uh, problems. California is a nice place, but it is affected by seismic risks. And uh, you can imagine how important these cities are for t technical development. And I'm talking to Mr. Husnulin, our big friend, who has mentioned b uh, the cooperation between Paris and Moscow. And today, Moscow and Paris, they have lots in common. That's why we cooperate. Uh, and uh, large uh, French and big, most famous uh, French architects are participating. Uh, in this joint work and uh, also working with the big Paris project and the big Moscow project and our common energy and uh, unification of our intellectual opportunities are very important. Esteemed colleague, the director of the Institute of Economics, uh, also uh, mentioned very correctly that we do not have to demolish what was built at the outskirts. We have to include what was created at the outskirts uh, into new projects. It's very important both for Paris and for Moscow. And the human being should be in the center of the solution. We have to think uh, by the mind of a simple individual who is living in that area to eliminate those uh, enclaves difficult to reach, make it easy to approach them. 
to facilitate the transportation infrastructure. And uh, that will make the megalopolises more attractive. Sometimes even the citizens, uh, they disapprove the conditions of their life in this huge city. And at the time of its presidency, uh, Nicolas Sarkozy, he launched the projects of the Big Paris, which is going to be one of the largest projects of the 21st century in terms of city uh, renovation. And uh, uh, also, the Kyoto Protocol is also a very important event, for we also emit a vast number of gases and emissions causing greenhouse effect. We need engineers, urbanists, planners, and architects, and I'd like to extend our gratitude for their labor and work. Of course, we need to discuss at all levels, and uh, proceeding from French experience, we realized that national and uh, regional administration, they should work together for um, very often, as Mr. Director said, uh, we sometimes have to push the uh, decisions from top to the bottom. And uh, being a leader and being in charge of that kind of work, uh, we signed a document uh, in 2011, uh, an agreement on creation of the second network of metro at the periphery of Paris, which will be having the same length of lines, and we launched this uh, project, and uh, the French uh, people, they changed their power in 2012, and new the president of France, uh, Francois Hollande, and uh, Minister Ero, they confirm their involvement and support of a new metro uh, project, which is going to be called Grand Paris Express. And uh, the time we are living in does not exactly matches the time for elections in respective countries or some changes in time. And sometimes uh, we have to survive serious political uh, crises and changes, and we have to learn to work together with politicians of different uh, views and approaches. If they think about the future of their country or city, you can always find a common language to speak. Of course, a social aspect is extremely important. And in France, sometimes after a very tough discussion, we came to come, to come to a consensus about the necessity of this uh, big Paris project. And our new uh, megalopolis uh, will have to be a new place with new aesthetics, new justice, new culture. Uh, a city with uh, no social uh, inequality combining different uh, cultural trends and uh, layers of society. And Paris, uh, as Marat said, we uh, are doomed to be the cities of global centers caliber. And we believe uh, the big Paris and big Moscow, they are moving in advance guard of the architect uh, ideas and a megalopolis in order to have a weight in the world should attain a certain size and it's very important however a big size also has a price to pay for too big a city also produces some other events be that moscow or tokyo those traffic jams uh, they of course they influence the a safety of the city and the social environment. It's the backside of the medal. And 
sometimes it impedes the accomplishment of the projects. However, we have to dream, to learn to dream. And if we want to implement that dream, we can do that. And we have to combine all experts uh, and efforts of politicians and uh, engineers. And we have to involve the people and citizens of Tokyo, Mexico, and uh, everybody should take their place in that future. And uh, this will make it possible for us to hope that our vision of the future will be accomplished and we can build better future for ourselves, for our neighbors, for the whole of the world. Let's plunge into utopian a little bit and uh, we'll be successful. Epstein, please remember you are standing between lunch and <laughs> people in the lunch. Since we have overshot our time immensely, may I ask you to be very, very brief? Спасибо за возможность выступить. Я буду очень коротко. I will try. Uh, I will try to be uh, very uh, brief. Uh, now we have a so-called topic uh, of agglomeration planning, and maybe uh, and Samara. And uh, one of the major tools to develop this uh, documentation is the so-called zoning of the territories. And by doing this, we could uh, define the function of the territories of each specific territory. However, the parameters of those functional zones, they are not uh, written down or uh, defined from the viewpoint of the behavior rules which are fixed in the legislation, in uh, cultural uh, water resources use, uh, health care. And in these works, we do not see any zoning in terms of uh, the grade of reaction and attitude of authorities to develop this or that territory. And it's uh, hard to understand how authorities should act when an investor comes and say, I want to do something. He falls under certain restrictions. And I think that time has come that we have to attach special importance to that aspect so that uh, whether uh, this investor is going to support it, whether the authorities will be indifferent to him or it will create obstacles to him by observing the interests of the territory itself. So this is one of the possible tools to develop agglomeration, which also has to be developed. Thank you. Thanks for all the support. Uh, we now conclude this session. We actually hope to get some time to invite uh, questions from the audience, but now it's too late for lunch, so uh, let's go ahead and conclude this. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen.